baptism directly after service. Um, there's a baby dedication right before Brother Dieter preaches. Um, so that's your little preview of what's coming up today. Um, also, um, this evening, uh, there is a Galentine's event, which is for all the ladies. And there, it's over here in the youth room. And it's going to be uh, for all the ladies at 530, I think. Is that correct? I don't know who I need to... Okay, 5.30. There's all the information. It's going to be breakfast for dinner. And, um, and so if you're a lady, come on over here at 5.30. Um, also, men's conference is coming up this weekend. And so if you're a guy, we're going to be going up to the mountains to Estes Park. And there's always a move of the Holy Ghost. There's something powerful about getting together with men from other churches around Colorado. We pray, we worship, um, and we hear the word of the Lord. And so I really encourage you to, even if you only make for one service of that, try to make it up for men's conference. I'm just going to be able to go up Friday night and Saturday morning, but, um, but try to make it to men's conference. It's up in Estes Park at the YMCA. Um, also, uh, and for... So that's for youth on Friday. We're just encouraging all the young guys to go up to youth conference. There's going to be a girls' night at uh, Kalen's house, Giovanni and Kalen's house, um, for the girls for youth on Friday. And uh, let's see, is there anything else? There's one more thing I needed to say. What was it? Maybe I'll remember later. Oh, the coffee shop is opening. So is that tomorrow? Tomorrow it's going to be open to the public. Brianna's been working super hard, doing a really great job. Um, and so she's going to be doing that. And uh, so stop by sometime during the week. You can stop by from 6 to 1, and uh, it'll be open for people to come in. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, we want to reach out into the community with this and really make some connections with people around through that coffee shop. Um, oh, one more thing. The Young Married Date Night. That's next um, Saturday, or this coming Saturday. And so that's going to be, I think that's at Paul and Amy's house. And, um, and so you can get with Alicia for more information about that. Um, but let's stand this morning, and let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's, uh, I, like I said, I feel, I feel something in this place already. Let's entreat that spirit. Let's, um, let's lift our hands. Let's close our eyes. Let's uh, entreat the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, we need you today, Lord. We need you today, Jesus. You are so good, Lord. You're so holy and righteous and worthy. Hallelujah. We welcome you into this place, God. You are our King and our God. We humbly come before you, Lord. Lord, you look to those who are of a contrite spirit, to those who tremble at your word, Lord. I, I feel that spirit in here this morning, God. I believe there's people that are coming before you contritely, acknowledging that they don't have a handle on their life themselves, but that they need you, God. I'm coming from that position, Lord. I need you, God. I don't have it all together. I don't have all the answers. I need you, Lord. I need your spirit. You are the giver of life. You are the sustainer of life. Lord, we need you today. We need you today. We need you today. Lord, we believe that you are moving in this place in a mighty way, God. We believe that your power is here, Lord. We believe that you have something for this congregation today. In Jesus' name, fall in this place. Fall in this place, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. I have a burden for a few souls that are in this place. One of them is the Lord's been dealing with me. No matter what I do or where I go, I see him. That's Brother Wiggly. I see him. in the spirit you know God has something for us and I don't want to miss it do you you know what it is we serve a God of miracles and wonders healings and brother Wiggly right now right now raise your hands and keep talking to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, Lord, send your spirit upon him, Lord, an anointing of her healing and miracle work and power, Lord, and restore his health to the fullest. 
I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, for thou art the God of our salvation and the hope that we have in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let healing virtue flow through his body. In Jesus' name, and the kidneys and the lungs, make him every wood whole. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Brother Wesley, your daughter, you're concerned. Raise your hands to the Lord right now and call upon the name of Jesus. We're going to believe the Lord for her miracle, and the doctors are going to say to her, I don't understand what happened, but it's gone. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Brother Jay, God is touching you right now. Call upon his name. Call Jesus. Say, Jesus, here I am. I need your miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, virtue flow, healing, miracle, work and power, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Anyone else need a miracle? Anyone else? Hallelujah. You're looking at a miracle right here. I'm a miracle. God brought, God brought me out of the grave. Just a penny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a penny in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the anointing of the Lord upon you. Let the virtue of the Holy Ghost fill your body right now with healing and miracle work and power and cause that cancer to disappear. Cause that cancer to dry up and disappear out of her body in the name of Jesus Christ. For thou art the God that we serve. You are Jesus Christ, the almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, our healer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's virtue flowing throughout the whole church here. Healing virtue, miracle work and power. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to bless our pastor, Lord. Let healing, oh God, let miracle work and power rest upon him, Lord. And use him mightily, Lord. He's your servant. Lord, you've called him into the ministry. Lord, to preach this gospel of miracle work and power of salvation and hope that we have. Jesus, bless him right now. In Jesus' name, the anointing of the Lord rest upon you and through and through and work a great work in his life. Great work. Save and deliver, Lord, his family. Give him his heart and desire, Lord, to save his children saved. In Jesus' name, I break the yoke and the bondage that the enemy has done to his children. In the name of Jesus, uh, we break that yoke, Lord Jesus, in your precious name. Uh, set him free, Lord. Healing, Lord. Healing. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. 
when we were, had our scare with Brother Gus uh, a couple weeks ago or, or a couple months ago, I kept telling the Lord, we need the prophetic voice in our church. We need his prophetic voice. And this is apostolic. This is, I'm not about the, the forms of like, we got to do this and this in the service. We got to let the Lord move. And the anointing is moving in this place right now. And step into that anointing as they begin to sing, as we begin to worship. Let's step into that anointing in Jesus' name. Spirit of 
wish somebody who knew how to operate in the anointing would just start operating in it right now. Hallelujah. Those of you who know how to operate in the anointing, lift up your hands, start moving, feel after the spirit of the Lord, feel after his spirit right now, worship him. Hallelujah. The Lord is doing something in this place in Jesus name, in Jesus name. As they sing this one more time, let's operate, operate in Jesus name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just want to give you one encouragement. During this song, I want to take up the offering, and here's why. Because, well, for one thing, Sister Kim told me to. But secondly, because this, um, when we are operating in faith, there's always got to be some kind of action that is a catalyst to that faith, right? When God tells Noah to build the ark, Noah had faith, and his faith moved him, right, to obey God, right? When, I, when, when the prodigal son was restored. When did the father restore him? The father didn't go out looking in the pig pen. The father didn't go out into the far country when he was wasting the substance. It was when he saw him coming towards him, right? That's when the father ran out to meet him, right? The father is willing to restore. He's ready. He's waiting. He's hoping, but he wants there to be that repentance. He wants there to be that turnaround. And if you want to construct a speech like the prodigal son and say, well, Lord, here I am and I'll be your servant and all that, that's fine. But start moving towards him. Start moving towards him and see what he does. And as you start moving towards him, the Bible says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. It doesn't say just sit there and do nothing and he'll draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And so if we can enact the faith that's operating in this place in some kind of action this morning, bring your offering. That is a symbol of action. That's a symbol of faith, right? That's how you show your faith to God saying, God, I trust you with all my resources. Lift up your hands and worship him. That's an act of faith sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to lift up our hands. That can be an act of faith. Start dancing before the Lord even when you don't feel like dancing. That is a huge act of faith right? Dance like the weight's been lifted. You might still feel the weight, start dancing like it's been lifted, right? The children of Israel marching around Jericho, at what point did the walls fall? When they shouted with a great shout, they marched around seven times under God's instruction. They got to that last time, seven times, blew the trumpets, shouted with a great shout, right? On their action, their faith moving into action and the walls fell down. So bring your offering and start moving. Start moving. Faith moves, right? Faith moves in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
This is the atmosphere in which God moves, and it's up to you. It's up to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe God is working. I believe there's healing and restoration happening. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Don't stop the spirit of worship. Let's continue on in it, and let God move. Let God move. Let him move in your life. Let him move in the lives of those around you. Hallelujah. Operate in the anointing in Jesus' name today. Operate in his anointing today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. A shout of faith for the victory. I'm sure some of you think that we're just trying to pump people up so we look a certain way. The difference between what you're thinking and what's happening is we believe that this works. We actually believe that God is here. We actually believe that God will move. If you'll step out in faith, lay aside your pride, lay aside your prejudice. In Jesus' name, just let's worship the Lord together. Let's join together as one in unity today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
and he'll renew your strength. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's not a night too dark. A journey too long to Right now, yes, Lord. And I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. 
where the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to remind somebody that the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Hallelujah. I want to remind somebody that when he anoints, he anoints for a purpose. And even if you're in a faraway land, even if you're in a faraway land, he told the children of Israel, if they would turn towards him, even in the farthest place they've ever been from him, that he, for all that, he would not forsake them and he would hear them. He would hear them. Hallelujah. The anointing is heavy here this morning. Let's lift up our hands one more time. Hallelujah, one more time. I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Dieter. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Can you say it with me? Jesus. Jesus. Your mercy, Lord Jesus. Your grace, Lord Jesus. Your favor, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's so good to have you all here today. After I get done preaching, we have a few people that are going to be baptized, quite a few. The water's ready, so during this message, praise God. If during this sermon today you feel led of the Lord to be baptized, I want you to get with Brother Gus, amen, and he'll make sure you're ready. Amen. We've got a beautiful young couple that have been blessed with a beautiful little baby named McKenna. And I would like the parents and grandparents and family to come up. So good to see you, Zach. God bless you. And your little one over there, God bless you. So good to see Brother Lance and Sister Amanda. I love you guys. Amen so much. I have uh, desired, if, if we could, the family come around them. i like the grandparents to be on both sides of, of Joe and Kendra. And if you could come forward, maybe stand right about here. Whew, man, I feel the anointing on my hands. How many feel that? You feel that anointing in this house? Mm. God is doing something, church. There's something powerful happening here, and we just got to walk in the Spirit. I love baby dedications because it, it reminds me of getting a push in the right direction. In Old Testament times, children were named in very particular ways. When Brother Rory had Chase, uh, all he did was chase him around. <laughs> I remember one time Chase runs up to me and he's talking to me and he says, excuse me, Pastor Dieter, I have to go chase that bird right now. He was gone, so he was running. I have been dedicating children since I first started in ministry, and it's an ancient tradition that God has passed down throughout the ages. We see, amen, Abraham and Isaac. We see the forefathers, amen, speaking blessing over their children, favor, naming their children in very distinct ways and sending them with those strong names like arrow prayers. McKenna today is a precious and beautiful child. And she's going to be loved her whole life. Because look at all these people that just adore her already. And then all of us supporting too. When, uh, when we found out that Kendra was expecting um, she's so little, I was worried about her. And he's so big, so it's like, you know, a chihuahua giving birth to German Shepherd puppies. I was worried. But God has just blessed this beautiful family with a child. 
Raising kids is something that God has put upon the parent, but also the family and, and upon the church. We are here as a church to support this family. And this family is here to support this family. That's biblical. And so when we pray over McKenna today, if, as we speak health, as we speak blessing, as we speak favor, okay? As we speak angels and protection, amen? I want you to come into agreement with those prayers. I want you to say, yes, Lord. Oh, and you're going to put your hand out like this, amen? And Brother Michael, Brother Casey, Brother Power, Brother Gus, amen, would you come? Amen, Brother Phil. Amen. We're going to anoint McKenna. So good to see my dad. Hallelujah, strong. Brother Joe and I have had a lot of conversations through the years about having a revelation of Jesus and how that revelation of Jesus and who he is as God in your life it's far more important than anything else that you can gather. And as I was pondering this dedication, that came to my mind. And so I would like Grandpa Mullins. You've got a lot of grandkids, buddy. He's trying to catch me. You just, don't you love old people? I tell you, I just love old people. <laughs> Amen. I would like Brother Mullins, Brother Ken, would you come? Amen. His grandfathers and the grandmothers, would you stand behind? And Brother Joe, Brother Ken, Dad, would you anoint that child? But would you put some oil on their hands and anoint that child? Amen. And Dad's Dad's going to give you a good chunk of oil. That's what he does. You'll be able to change the oil in your car after this. Would you, would you point your hands this way? Heavenly Father, we dedicate this beautiful, adorable child, McKenna Mullins, to you right now. As these grandfathers, Brother Ken and Brother Joe, Commit, Lord Jesus, to support Kendra and to support Joe, Lord Jesus. As they commit, Lord Jesus, to encourage them to live for you. As they commit, Lord Jesus, as this family commits to, Lord Jesus, support Joe and Kendra, Lord. I pray that you wrap your arms around them. That you grant health and strength to McKenna, Lord that you grant, Lord Jesus, peace. Lord God, let her have happy dreams and happy thoughts. God, let, Lord Jesus, her life be filled with the kind of joy that only knowing you can bring. Heavenly Father, I pray that these grandparents, these aunts and uncles, Lord, will always show unity and love for one another, Lord, that this child will know beyond a shadow of a doubt what the love of God looks like in a family. I pray in the name of Jesus that one day that Joe and Kendra will be able to lead Ken McKenna to saving faith in Jesus Christ. And one day, Lord, she'll proclaim you as King of kings and Lord of lords. She'll step into an old-fashioned baptistry and be baptized in the name that is above every name, and that she will be filled with the baptism of the Spirit of Christ. In Jesus' name, Lord. And until that day, she's under the covering of her believing parents. And so, Lord, we give you praise for that. And we thank you, Lord, for the support of this loving family. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for angels that will keep charge over her. And so, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we dedicate this child in the name that is above all names. 
Heavenly Father, now, family, I want you just to kind of get close, and I want you to wrap your arms around them. I want you just to wrap your arms around them. I like the grandmas. That's right. Let me tell you, if you look into Sister Victoria's eyes when she looks at that baby, you see melting right there. There's a whole lot of love. I see it in Carla. Carla just constantly fawning. That's, that's a beautiful thing. Sisters, I want you to pray as grandmothers. I want you to pray right now. And all you grandmas and mothers in here, would you point your hands this way and pray for divine wisdom for Kendra? Yes, Lord. Divine wisdom, divine perf- protection for Kendra, for McKenna, blessing for McKenna, blessing for Kendra in the name of Jesus. Fathers, I want you to point towards little Joe right now, and I want you to speak blessing over Joe right now. He needs wisdom. He's going to be raising a daughter in these difficult times, and he's going to need wisdom from above. He's going to need divine provision, financial help, and strength. He's going to need favor in those areas. He's going to need love. Amen. He's going to need healing virtue. He's got to be strong, so we need Joe to be healthy, Lord, and I want you to grant him complete and total divine health, Lord, that his home, Lord, would be a place of healing. Say it with me, in Jesus' name. Joe Mullins, is it your intention to raise that child to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it your intention? Amen. So all of you, raise your hands high. Say it with me. In thee, O Lord, do we place our trust. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this baby, God. We dedicate her to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God praise. Don't you just love babies? Too bad they got to grow up, huh? I, uh, I just can't believe how fast it goes. I, re- I was looking at pictures of my babies when they were little when we dedicated them. And it's just like yesterday. You may be seated this morning. So good to be with you this morning. There's a sweet presence of God in this place. By God's grace, I will not keep you too long, but I do feel led by the Lord in this series. Today, this is the third in the series, God's Plan for Relationships. Today, I want to talk to you about the blessing of giving honor. Somebody say honor. We're living in a time of perpetual offense. Folks are quick to judge quick to criticize, quick to condemn, and quick to cancel anyone who offends. Have you noticed that? Has anybody seen the shift? There is a spirit on the land, amen, and it has altered our society. I talked to a man that is very influential in our movement, a couple days ago, and he began to talk to me about all the prophets that he's talking to. And he said, every single prophet that he has talked to has told him that the spirit of of the land has shifted to madness. We are dealing with anxiety at a level that has never been known before. People are filled with fear. People are waking up in the middle of the night engulfed in anxiety. Satan has descended upon the land, and because the devil has come down nigh, seeing his time is short, we are seeing the things that we are seeing. It used to be that people that got canceled were more well-known. Maybe they got canceled as a politician, an athlete, occasional business leader, but unfortunately, amen, it's 
It's preachers, it's fathers, it's mothers, it's family members, a friend that says something that's not appreciated. It could be a person that you work with or someone on social media that just comes across as uh, as obnoxious to you or they just cross the line and so you just write them out of your life. Doesn't take much in our culture today. It could be a single misstatement, it could be a misunderstanding. And how you view relationships amen, will guide you in your life in all things. It's amazing how broken people are today. If they believe something to be true, regardless of how crazy it may be, it can be hard to convince someone to see the truth of reality. Because truth has to be agreed upon for us to get on the same page. Kim and I made a commitment to each other years ago that the Bible would be the end of the line in every discussion. And so today, people believe a lot of things. And I don't want to discount that you believe something to be right or true. A lot of people believe it. But that doesn't make it right or true. Just because you believe something doesn't make it so. And so we need the word of God today to bring us into alignment. Now, Proverbs 18, 19 says in the NASB, said a brother who is offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And quarrels are like the bars of a citadel. Proverbs 18, 19 in the NLT says an offended friend is harder to win back in a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. And we dealt with offense a few weeks ago. We live in a culture that is looking to be offended, looking to be angry. They are diagnosing everything you're saying and they're trying to figure out how to be upset with you. They're looking to dishonor. But Jesus commands us as believers and say, that's me. If you're a believer today, raise your hand. Amen. Jesus commands us as believers to live a different way. I tell you, I've gotten hurt. I've gotten offended. I've gotten backwards. And let me tell you, I've had to repent more than once. I'll tell you, with love comes great pain. But Jesus calls us to live differently. He calls us to live in love, like I preached last week, and he calls us to live in honor. That's where it gets hard. This is where the work begins. Scripture tells us in Romans 12, 10, he said, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Remember this scripture, I'll be referencing it. It just goes against our grain, doesn't it, to prefer someone else? When I got married, uh, my initial response was, this is all about me. You know, I got married to Kim. Uh, She was beautiful, right? And she's cute, and she's arm candy. You know, you girls buy purses, us guys get married. You know, we accessorize with a human being. See, look who I'm with. The rest of you guys, yeah, poor guy, man. Look at this. I'm sorry, that's how it works. Wish it wasn't that way, but you have to grow out of it as you get older. You realize how stupid it is because I've seen a lot of guys with arm candy end up very miserable. But listen to what he said. Honor. Somebody say honor. You might just type this in on Facebook. For those of you watching on Facebook, I want someone to type that in. I'm going to show honor. Every time something hits the mark, type it in. Amen. Or I want you to get this because Scripture says, honor another above yourself. To show honor to someone else, even above the way we feel like we should be treated. 
That's what I want to talk to you about. And I think it's so overlooked in relationships today and how much it matters to God that we honor each other. So many relationships would be healed if folks would focus on how to honor each other. Some of you right now are going, yeah, I hope so-and-so is listening to this. I hope my son, my daughter, this person, amen. It's for you, not for them just, okay? This doesn't work if you're hoping somebody else listens. The only way this works is if you get it. Oh, I got to honor you. And then I get it. Oh, I got to honor you. Now it works. So how many are starting to see where I'm headed? Stick with me. Now, in Matthew 13, 57, we look at Jesus, and he's coming to his hometown in Nazareth. Amen. We find people are shocked in Matthew 13, 57. Excuse me, I shouted my voice out a little bit. And so they were offended at him. <clears throat> and Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor. Thank you, buddy. Could you open it? Yeah. He's not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. I want you to, want, I want you to notice what happens next. Now, he did not do many Mighty works there because of what? Unbelief. Jesus said a prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. And it's not a coincidence that the next verse is there and he did not do many mighty works. Now, in the previous chapter, he's in Capernaum. And he healed everybody. In the previous chapter, the Bible said he healed them all. That's the word. Everyone that came, he delivered. How many just got goosebumps? My goosebumps just got this big right now. My suit's tight. Not because of that other reason. He doesn't do many mighty works because he was not shown honor. Because with honor comes blessing. How many have been feeling the presence of God getting loosed in this house more and more recently? Over the last weeks and months, it's just like an escalation of anointing. Amen. Honor is starting to flow in abundant life. And when the honor is released in the house, we start preferring one another. We start honoring one another. We start honoring God. Amen. Guess what happens? Follow me. Because revelation is so important. When you find a Bible principle, you got to grab a hold of it. Amen. When you find a truth, amen, grab a hold of it. Begin to practice it. It'll release miracles. How many want to see miracles in your life? Amen. Miracles are released. Fears are driven away. Amen. When honor is in the house, revelation and faith are friends. I'm convinced that this principle opens up all kinds of provision. Now, let's get into this. The Bible says in one version, it says, they were deeply offended. And they refused to believe him. And then Jesus tells his disciples, a prophet is honored everywhere, but except in his hometown and among his relatives, his own family. He's without honor. He's in his own hometown of Nazareth, and he's not honored. So what's the difference between showing honor and withholding honor? I want you to, I'm, I'm trying to teach you something here. And then I'm going to show you two Greek words that you can find in Scripture. The first word is atomos, which this word means without honor. And the word atomos means to dishonor, to treat someone common or ordinary. It should be treated like you're nothing special. There's no reason to honor you, to treat you. You're just common. You're not a treasure. You're just so-and-so. I shouldn't say anything about you because you're common. 
The next word that's translated honor, it looks like the word time. It has an extra E. It's pronounced timey. And this word means to value, to respect, to highly esteem. It means to treat as precious, weighty, valuable. It's a lot like love. Honor esteems, it cherishes, it values, it builds up, it believes the best. Honor. Let me teach you something. God wants to see more of this in this church. We used to sing a song when I was a kid. You notice we say brother and sister around here. But have you noticed that isn't going uh, very popular anymore? Just call me this, just call me that. I think we need to say, hey, Brother Phil and Sister Luana, amen. I think we need to say, hey, Pastor Gus, uh, Pastor Michael. I think it's good to say, hey, Brother Luke. I think it's good to say, hey, Sister Kim. I think we need to show a little honor because wherever honor is released, least, the gifting that person has is released at well, as well. Now, I want you to see something. This happened to Jesus. He's God manifested in flesh, and he's being called a simple man. Dishonor. Isn't this the carpenter's son? That's how they see him, and because of that, they didn't honor him as God. He's God manifested in flesh anyway. Just because you believe something to be true doesn't mean you're right. They missed it by a mile, and they grew up in the same neighborhood. Jesus said, in my own house, in my own hometown, and he's speaking. He said, I'm not honored. Read the story. It limited God. It's an important principle. Dishonor shuts down what God puts in people for you to receive. Dishonor separates you from whatever gifting that a person has to share with you. The miraculous power of God in Jesus Christ was literally limited. He didn't say he didn't want to do many mighty works. He said he could do no many mighty works there because of their unbelief, because they had dishonored him. He's God manifesting in flesh. He's standing there ready to heal, ready to save, ready to do what he does, ready to give what he has. And he, they are cut off from Holy Ghost power, cut off from miracles because of dishonor. Folks, you can be under the most anointed person and not get your breakthrough. People all around you will be getting blessed, getting breakthroughs, getting the Holy Ghost, getting baptized. Amen. But amen, your spirit of dishonor will keep you in bondage. Amen. You can get hung up on your own thinking patterns and get so offended and so walking in the flesh. Amen. Rumors and innuendos, you can miss your blessing. Just because you don't like a song, or maybe you don't like a singer, you don't like the preacher, amen, maybe you got a problem with your father or your mother, and you're missing the blessing of the authority in your life. You might as well say amen, because it's true. Just because you got a problem with people of conviction doesn't make you right and them wrong. Just because Nazareth didn't see him as he was, didn't make it so. God will move on others in this church regardless of your offense. Sadly, because you become your own stumbling block. And you can't be blessed. Here, amen, you're under the voice that God has called to, to save you, but you can't receive it because you're offended or maybe he doesn't meet your expectations, or maybe Jesus doesn't line up. God doesn't start out as a baby and grow up in a town like this, on the backside of a tracks, born in a manger. It doesn't happen, but it does. Yeah, we notice certain things, but I just can't accept. I'm here to tell you, I, I, I have been sent to a city 
to do something, and I have watched people that God sent, and he spoke to me that he sent them, and I've watched them walk away, and they walked away from the covering, and they ended up walking into confusion, slowly but surely walking in disarray, because something just didn't, right? God moves where there is honor. You got to understand that if you honor the preacher, the, the Bible says you get the preacher's reward. Amen. It, you get opened up to what they carry. Whatever you dishonor is shut off to you. I have watched guys. Amen. Come in, and there's been prophets in this church. There's been men that operate in the gifts of healing. Some people got healed. Some people got saved. Some people got the Holy Ghost. And another man said, oh, that was all just this and that. All had to deal with honor. Because your reception matters. Stick with me. I'm still teaching you something here. John 1, 12 said, but as many as received him, to them gave you power. That word received could be translated honor as well. To be received is to see what that person is. As many as received Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. And then listen to what Luke 10, 16 said. If they reject you, they reject me. How many are seeing the connection here? I used, to get, I used to get so embarrassed by my dad when I was a kid because dad's always been bananas for Jesus. Didn't matter where we were. Dad's making a scene, man. He's talking to people about Jesus. He's praying. He's anointing people with oil. He's starting Bible studies in Denny's. He's just doing things, going into churches that are not preaching the truth, and he's preaching the truth. He's getting kicked out of coffee shops and restaurants, and this is my dad. You know, as a teenager, trying to drive a fast car and do all those kinds of things and wear, you know, a leather jacket, that's just not cool, right? And so I tried to separate myself, and I'd get mad at Dad and say, everything's not in the spirit, Dad. You make everything spiritual. And he goes, everything's spiritual. And he came up here and started to pray. All I could think of is, I'm getting mine. Something changed in my mind, and it all had to do with honor. Something flipped in me some years ago when I seen my dad for who he is, a mighty man of God. He's not just some guy. Amen. He is called of God to reach the lost, and he is anointed and highly favored. And I need the things, amen, that my dad carries. I need them on me. And I said, Dad, you got to lay hands on me. I need what you got. You honor the place that God raised them. Matthew 10, 41 said, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive their reward. A lot of people don't want to don't wanna walk like this anymore because we've seen so much abuse. And God says, don't you worry about this and that. You just show honor. Honor the place that God has put that person and is using that person. And now what you're doing is you're allowing their anointing, their covering, and their blessing to overflow on you because there's something about showing honor to people that can release the mighty works of Jesus Christ on you. Jesus said, if they've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, they've done it unto me. Something about it. Matthew 25, 40 says it. This generation desperately needs to develop a spirit of honor, a culture of honor. Romans 13 put it like this. Give tribute, give honor where honor's due because there's no power given except that's been given from God. People in position over you at a job, 
amen, or your spouse, or amen, whatever. You, you doesn't give you the right. Maybe they're not qualified. Maybe they're not doing things perfectly, amen, but it doesn't give you a right to dishonor them. I feel like people today are going around looking for flesh. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I got, I, I, sometimes it, it gets so crazy where I feel like I'm under the microscope and under a magnifying glass. Amen. Hey, let me make it easy for you right there. Flesh. I'm not trying to present anything else. I'm just human. Something got a hold of me. 23 years ago, George Guy, amen, was in Denver. I didn't know him yet. I'm praying as I'm driving down the road. And I said, Lord, you put me in authority, but I'm not under authority, and that's not right. I'm not under another ministry. I'm just, it's not right, God, forgive me. Show me what to do. I need, I need to be under a Authority. I got dad, I got mom, but I need another minister. I'm driving down to Denver. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, I'm going to grant you leadership. I got in this meeting, and they were all just talking about going to Africa and having church. This is fresh in my mind because I just watched the video yesterday. And uh, I was praying and I was crying. I was sitting in the back. I really didn't know that many people at the time. I was getting ready to leave because I was so uncomfortable. You know how it is when you feel awkward and you, you kind of justify it by saying, you know what, they're all jerks. That's why I'm uncomfortable. Maybe you're uncomfortable because you're a jerk. So God showed me, you need to, you're not comfortable? When was comfort ever the barometer for righteousness? You know, is that in the Bible somewhere? Oh, you were uncomfortable? Oh, just go away. You're right. I don't see that anywhere. What does the Bible say? Get over it. <laughs> Your comfort is not the barometer for righteousness. So I'm sitting there getting ready to leave with an attitude a little bit, but I'm praying and crying at the same time. It's a weird thing. God, I want you, I want you, but these are jerks. Oh, God, help me. I'm not comfortable. Ask him. It took me years to overcome that. And I'm getting ready to leave, and George Guy walks up to me, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, on the way here, you were praying in your vehicle. George Guy said this to me. And he said, you ask God to be under leadership. And he said, you and I are going to talk every week from here on out. That was 22, 23 years ago. I went with him to Africa twice. I'm in the Philippines, uh, Mexico, you know, you name. I mean, that guy was amazing. And until the day God took him home, we talked regular. And he told me, he said, Dieter, everything that's on my life is going to come on you. And you're going to travel the world. And God's going to multiply your ministry. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if I wouldn't have honored Brother Guy, I never would have gone all over the world. If I wouldn't have honored Brother Guy, he took my hand one time and he said, watch this. He said, I'm going to, and I was in Africa and he said, Dieter, get ready. There's hundreds of people out there. And he grabs me, I'm going to teach you something. He takes my hand and he puts it on this little African. And they were all munchkins in that area. And he said, watch this, watch this, here it comes. And he said, right now, and all of a sudden, I watched the Holy Ghost fall on that little person, and the God filled them with the Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. When I was asked yesterday by my daughter, Dad, how did you know? And I said, you could see it. They were speaking Swahili, and they were speaking something else. We were, the first time I went there, Brother Hall goes, oh, look at that lady. She's an American. He's speaking in tongues, but it was English. And not just any English, American English. It wasn't like British English. By Jove, God is good. You know? No, it was, she was praising God, and I'm freaking out. Brother Hall says, look at this, look at this. She doesn't know a lick of English. And she's praising God in English. 
After Brother Guy took my hand, I have laid hands on hundreds of people. Amen. When I was in the Philippines, he comes up to me. Remember when we were all lined up in front of all those thousands of people? Remember that, Brother Casey? We were all standing up there. He goes, Dieter, do what I taught you. Go. You got it. It's on you. It's right now. It's on you. I couldn't even believe I could hear him. It was a roar of 5,000 people in this room, and people were being filled with the Holy Ghost and healed. And like, it was just absolutely phenomenal. I said, do it, Peter. He said, do it. And I laid my hands on people, and they began to speak with tongues as the Spirit of God gave out. He said, lay your hands on as many people as you can. It's on you. But if I wouldn't have honored him, I wouldn't have humbled myself when he called me up more than once and said, Dieter, I'm going to jerk your shirt tail. You know, he's Southern. Later, I'm going to jerk your shirt tail. Kim always needed an interpreter with Brother Guy. She'd go, she'd shake her head and say yes, and then later on she'd go, Dieter, what did he say? I said, I speak Southern. It's okay, pumpkin. I'll tell you, sweetheart. Amen. Makes me wonder what kind of miracles God wants to do for you and I in here. Amen. But you're limiting God because of your attitude, because of your dishonor. Amen. Think about the things that Jesus would have done if they would have honored him. How many people stayed sick? Amen. That didn't need to stay sick. How many people stayed lost that didn't need to stay lost? Psalm 78, 40 says, how often they provoked him in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God. That word could be dishonored. It's how powerful it is. And limited the Holy One of Israel. Faith and honor are traveling companions. Amen. And you want blessings in your life? You want favor? Amen. Start honoring. Amen. One another. Amen. Husbands, love your wives. Amen. And lead them. Be leaders. Grow a spine and say this for me and my half. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be a house of honor. John 12, 32 said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will, I will draw all men. If God is lifted up, he will draw. Honored. God is honored. Makes me wonder how many believe that God wants to do something in this thing. In this room, you want to take the limits off of God in your life? Amen. Are you done being Nazareth? Do you want to be Capernaum? How many want to be part of Capernaum? Amen. I'm going to stand on my feet. I'm going to worship God. Amen. When the preacher says, come to the altar, I'm running. Who knows what God will do? What prayers, how, how many prayers does God want to answer for you, but he didn't because you limited God with restricted honor? Some people can't even listen to the preacher preach because they're so full of dishonor. Offended cynics, accusers are missing out on so much. Scripture says, honor one another above yourselves. How are we going to do in that arena? How, how, how are you doing in that arena? Are you honoring your brother, your sister, your father, your mother, the preacher, amen, your husband, your wife? We live in a cancel culture. Is it easy for you to write off people so I'm not dealing with that? Honor one another above yourself. In fact, in one version of scripture, it says, outdo one another. In showing honor. So, Brother Michael, you're so awesome. I see the favor of God, the anointing of God in you. And he said, oh, man, no, you're awesome, brother. Interrupting each other. Honoring one another. And God goes, oh, yeah. Brother Guy grabbed a hold of me when we were in Africa the first time. And he said, Brother Dieter, never forget this. In Ethiopia, we saw 100,000 people in one service receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We've seen 10,000 people with cancer instantaneously healed. We've seen hundreds of thousands of people, amen, healed from all kinds of diseases, walking out of wheelchairs. He said it was crazy. We didn't pray for any of that. 
He said, the Ethiopians never prayed for those things. And he grabbed my hand and he took my hand. And he made me look at him and he said, this is what they prayed for. Unity. <laughs> unity in Christ is so powerful. Think about it. it. Unity is so powerful that God shut it down in the, t- the building of the Tower of Babel. Because he said, he said, if they are unified, nothing can stop them. That's what the Bible says. So he confused their language. Because they weren't, they weren't unified around the right thing. Can you imagine? That's why he said, if my people, people, if everyone under the sound of my voice, oh, did you hear this? If my people, everyone under the sound of my voice, your people, amen, if my people which are called by my name will what? Humble themselves. Humble people honor each other. Proud people are always offended about something. You're offended with your wife. You're offended with your husband. He didn't do this for me. He doesn't do that for me. And I'm miserable, so it must be his fault. Oh, yeah, I've been a pastor a long time. Huh? She should do this for me. She should do that for me. Can you imagine if everybody was preferring one another? Nobody be griping. Huh? If you're trying to outdo each other, think about how happy your marriage would be. No, 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 I'll cook. No, 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 I'll wash those dishes. You go sit down. Kim would fall over and have a cardiac arrest and say, we are in revival right now. God is real. He's on the throne and he delivered me. First Peter 3, 7 said, husband, honor, love your wives. Wives, have a spirit of honor for your husband. Wives, honor, respect your husband. This is what the scripture tells us. He, so, he tells us, and listen, the biggest of the Ten Commandments, it's number five. Honor your father and mother, right? Which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Not only long life, amen, but if you're not honoring your parents, you think things are going well right now, it won't last. This disconnect and this spirit of dishonor is ruining society. The stuff I'm seeing, when I listened to the Canadian prime minister talk the other day, I was like, are you kidding me? Accusing people that disagree with him of being communists. And I mean, it was just crazy and being Nazis. I mean, it was just nuts. The world is going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I listened to a man talk yesterday, a Canadian father that was supporting the truckers in the convoy. All he was doing is supporting the truckers, trying to make sure they had food. And then the government froze his accounts. He has no access to his money. He's got seven kids. And so he said, but God is good. He said, don't rise up in anger. He said, don't dishonor the police. And I was like, oh, man, you guys are in trouble over there in Canada with a guy like that. And he said, we got to honor him. I heard him say it. I started bawling. And he said, oh, God is so good. He said it right on the news. I was exercising. And I was at the gym over there. I'm going. And he said, God is so good. It's what he said. He's provided for me and my children. We've not missed a meal. People have come out of the woodwork. They're bringing food to my house. They're taking care of us. He said, listen, Canadians. Listen, Americans. Don't lose your love, he said. Don't lose your honor. I said, preach it, brother. (laughs) Honor is a choice. I'm not going to dishonor anybody. I I don't like what's going on in the current administration. Sometimes I get so fired up, I'm not going to lie to you. Anybody that knows me knows how I think. 
But I don't hide it. But I'm going to tell you, I said, Lord, I'm sorry. And I was thinking about the fleas of a thousand camels infesting his armpits. I'm sorry about that one. And the Lord says, don't be like that boy. That's not who you are. Amen. My people honor Nero. Anybody read history? Any read, anybody read about Caligula and, and, and Nero and Caesar Augustus and these guys? Man, they were horrible, like Tigger would say. And, and, and he said, don't mess with the powers that be. They're ordained of God. Let it go. God's allowing this. It just goes against our democracy, doesn't it? Our, our minds, freedom, right? I'm a, if I'm a slave, I'm supposed to escape. But in the Bible, he says, show honor to your owners. I would have been going, excuse me? Exit stage left, man. I'd be over here going, I'm going to make a break for it. Honor is a choice. Amen. Check out our Lord's example, Luke 2.52. Famed verse. Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and with favor with God and man. And okay, before he did that, look at verse 50. Uh, before he did verse 52, look what he did in verse 51. And he went down with them. This is Jesus as the boy. His parents and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. Same exact word that's used in Romans 13 for honor. Same word. He honored them. He submitted. Somebody raise your hand. If Jesus honored his earthly parents as God manifested in flesh, shouldn't we? He was our example in all things. I, I got to wrap this up. Proverbs 30, 11 said, there is a generation that curses its father and does not bless its mother. There is a generation that's pure in its own eyes. Think about how it is in this society. Justify their own poor behavior. Condemn the elders. Check this out. Yet it is not washed from its filthiness, this generation. There is a generation, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are like swords. They have the preacher for lunch. They have their parents for dinner whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Now watch this, watch this. The leech, the leech has two daughters. Give and give. In other words, give me more, give me more. Have we ever seen a more entitled generation? He said there are three things that are never satisfied, four never say enough. The grave, the barren womb, the earth that's not satisfied with water, the fire that never says enough. And then watch verse 17, how it wraps it up. The eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles will eat it. I could stop right there. I'm telling you, there are consequences to not honoring the man of God. There are consequences to not honoring your parents. There are consequences to not honoring the authorities. I thank God for our police officers and all this nonsense of trying to defund the police is all a move, listen to me, it is all a move to destabilize our society. They want to break it down so they can bring it back in their own image. That's what this is all about. Do not be fooled. First thing Hitler did when he wanted to change Germany is he told all the children in school, he said, if your parents disagree with us, tell us. He got the children to disobey the fifth commandment. He taught them. Hitler taught the children to disobey their parents, to dishonor their father and mother. Honor produces faith. Faith produces blessing. Amen. It produces our calling. It produces destiny. And Satan wants to keep you from your spiritual destiny. And before I close, I have so much here I'm not going to get to. I want you to see this. He said, honor your father and mother that your days may be long. Right? 
in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Right now, the Holy Ghost spoke to me as I was writing this sermon. God has a destiny that is being impeded in your life because you're not honoring you're not honoring your mother, your father, your God, your, your, your history, where you come from. He told the Israelites, don't forget where I've taken you. Write it down. Put up stones. Never stop telling your stories lest your children forget who they are. Check this out. Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given. Give honor and it shall be given. What good measure? That means overly fair. Would you stand? Press down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. How many want to release blessing into your life? Honoring one person can release favor and change your life forever. 1999, I met an amazing gentleman named Tim Bensley, who has been, become a dear friend. I was working for a company called Disaster Restoration. Throughout the years, we would do projects together, and we built a relationship, and a deep friendship ensued. It was, he got to love Uncle Adolph, and he really got close to my Uncle Ewald. Uncle Ewald would go and just live with him and work on his house, and Tim loved it. Tim and Linda still talk to me about him. I, I never, ever had any idea how God was going to use Tim in my life. I just loved the guy. I met him and loved him and just honored him and showed him honor. And, 2014, God opened up my spirit and had been talking to me for five years about this facility right here, right now. Many of you know a whole bunch of the story and I'm not gonna go through all the details, but I'm gonna tell you this. Tim wanted me to build him a house and we ended up working that all out. He asked me about the church. And because of the long relationship we had had and the favor that had come, gone on between us and the trust and the relationship. God put favor in his heart because we were honorable with him. And one day he just, he ended up helping us build this church so we could do it. The banks turned us down. Everything, every door looked like it was closed until one day Tim said, go build your church. I called Kim up. We had literally, dad had called me that day on the way to see Tim. Dad said, son, the last bank just turned us down flat. I began to cry as I was driving to Denver to meet Tim. After Tim said, go build your church, I called my wife I, where he used to live. I had no phone reception. So it was the worst five minutes of my life as I drove down that mountain road trying to get to signal. I got to signal and Kim was the first person I called and I said, babe, you are not gonna believe it. And she and I lost it on the phone and we wept. I'm here to tell you, honor has a way of coming back. You show honor and God's gonna put favor in people's hearts towards you. If you honor that young man right there, Michael, you honor him. He's so favored of God and he has hidden God's word in his heart. Amen. Since he was seven years old, I have watched him do it. You will get blessings come out of his mouth towards you and he'll come up with the word and you'll just go, what? He's anointed. You honor that father of mine right there. You have him lay hands on you. Anything can happen. Can you imagine if every one of us would honor one another? 
and appreciate one another. Amen. Fathers and mothers be honored and reverenced and children and adult children honoring their parents. Amen. Can you imagine the favor, the things that will be loosed? Brother Paul, did you all know that Brother Paul has an anointing? That God spoke this to me years ago. Brother Paul is called to lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. He has it on his life. He has a gift of healing on him. If you just say, oh, that's just Paul, you can miss out on a miracle. He's been given something. Can you imagine what will happen in this house? The miracles could be loose that if we honor one another, the happiness in our marriages, amen, the friendships that are so deep that will be created when we honor one another. The power and the presence of God will flow and joy will be in our families, amen, and happiness will be in our relationships. Would you raise your hands? Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 3. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled. Do you see the principle even here? And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Would you raise your hands? Heavenly Father, show me what you value, Lord. Church, if you will honor one another at a new level, and, and that means forgiveness, that means letting things go, that means, amen, if you've been crossed, you just let it go, you just forgive it, amen, you're going to be, have something released in your life. Raise your hand. Show me what you value. Show me who you honor, and I show you who you'll become. Make it a point to honor God. Make it a point to honor the ministry. Make it a point to honor your family, your spouse. Make it a point and watch God. Living an honoring life means, and it begins, excuse me, with submission to God. And the time I spend in the altar invites God to help me reevaluate my priorities. How many of you would join me at this altar this morning? Would you ask God to just give you that kind of spirit? Brother Paul, I, I want to say this. Anytime God talks to you to, to lay hands on me, I want you to obey God, okay? I believe in you, buddy. I believe God is with you, buddy. Do you hear me? Dad, anytime you want to pray for me, pray for me. How many of you want to live a God-honoring life? How many of you want to just say, Lord, Jesus, I need my brother. There's giftings that Mikey has. I never would have imagined when you were a little boy. He's doing things. It's just absolutely astounding how God's using him. Stephanie, all of you are so important. This little girl wouldn't be here without her. With our hands raised. God, I'm praying that you heal relationships today. Let the spirit of honor fall in our families. Let it fall in our church. Let honor and love release the works of faith that you've commanded them to do. Let Lord Jesus, let the works of God be manifest in us. 
let us love one another as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, Lord. Let the husbands love their wives. Let the wives love and honor their husbands. Let us outdo one another that our relationships would be healthy. That we would prefer one another above ourselves. In Jesus' name, would you worship him with me? Thank you for coming. Baptized. Amen. My mom will help you get the garments, the baptism garments. Mom. Oh, thank you, Jesus. you right now, Lord. Let the power of the Holy Ghost demonstrate itself in you. house. Listen to what the Holy Ghost says. Humble yourself where you need to humble yourself. Ask that person you need to ask to pray for you. Ask them to forgive you. Whatever it takes, make it right. In Jesus' name.
Heavenly Father, let the Spirit of Christ rest upon us in this church. Let love, let forgiveness, let honor. Let us honor one another above each other, above ourselves, I mean. Let the husbands love and honor their wives in their position. Let the wives follow and honor their husbands. Let the power of God rest upon us. Let the ministry, let the musicians, let the song leaders, Lord, let them, Lord, be worthy of double honor, Lord, as they sing the songs of Zion. Let us receive them, Lord. And let us let the giftings that flow through them fall upon us in Jesus' name. There is no light apart from oh. Would you raise your hands and honor the Lord today? Amen. We're going to baptize these beautiful people in the name that's above every name. We would love for you that can to stay. Those of you that are watching online, just worship. Amen. As we prepare these to be baptized. Thank you for allowing me the liberty to minister to you today. I love you all so, so very much. In Jesus' name.
Yeah.